All right, we're gonna test it for the first time. Shit. <laughs> Slip a fuse in there, charge up the amps. I know that it's coming, but you're never ready for it. I'm just gonna slip one fuse in here. I dropped the other one. back here. See what we got going on back here. Alright. So we got our maintain ants light. <laughs> that supposedly means that capacitor is charging. Of course the amps are also getting power and their capacitors are filling up. Stick a key in it. Fired up. charging so I'm, I'm expecting that this thing was hammered dead but it won't take it but a few minutes to pick up and uh, go see what happens see the green lights are on back there that means that the uh, relay got power and it's sending out a signal and I got my green light on on the uh, JL. It's still on the other side here. Yep, got the blue light on on the apocalypse. I don't have the Memphis in yet. Now I just gotta check all the tuning. The tuning's gonna be all messed up. But I can fix all that. All right, so we're fully charged. I'm gonna get the app and check that out. Um, everything's working as it's supposed to right now. All right, guys. That blue light says we got our uh, Bluetooth connected and uh, we're sitting at 1487. Uh, while it's running, all is well. It shows I got about 99 point some odd percent of the life left in this super cap. So there's that. Let's shut it off and see what the voltage looks like. All right. After letting it sit for about a half an hour to stabilize, we dropped down to 12.73. And we're looking real good. So I'm very happy. So I gotta finish up things, but the electrical system is functional. And the stereo plays. I don't have the sub, the, the, the little sub, the front sub hooked up right now. But the rest of this is, is hooked up and I got the right crossover frequencies on things. I still got to go through and tune it all because it sounds like crap right now. But uh, it's because I changed the channels around. 
So, yeah, good times all around. Guys, I'm very impressed with this uh, with this super capacitor. It's doing a fine job, and uh, I cranked it up out here in the parking lot uh, at the house for a short period of time. And the bass notes are just way snappier and crisper. Uh, and the, the, before, how the power could fall off after a little bit, it doesn't do that now. It holds a lot better. The voltage is a lot more stable. I don't notice it fluctuating nearly as much as it did. So, I'm happy. Uh, yeah. So when I first fired it up, I had one fuse in here just to test things out and I kind of forgot that I didn't put the second fuse in. And uh, about the first 20 seconds or 10 seconds of a song, I blew one of the 300 amp fuses I had in here, the, the only 300 amp fuse. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're definitely pulling way more than 300 amps from up here. Um, and supposedly we're pulling 370 on one alternator and 300 on another, so I can attest to that. The fact that uh, we took out that fuse that quick means we're pulling quite a bit of power from up here. But, the super cap is definitely buffering it and it's doing its job and working as it's supposed to work. I'm very happy. All right guys, whenever uh, I'm gonna drop some, some bass, the neighbor's gone so I'm going to drop you guys some bass and show you what's up. So, uh, during the base test, which is ultimately the test, I had the app up and running on, uh, had the Ustart app or the uh, SuperCap app up and running during the test. I was washing the, the meter, so if you notice, there's a little circle around the start button. And uh, whenever the capacitor is fully charged, it'll almost go all the way around it'll have a little tiny sliver and on a brand new one it would go all the way around on mine it goes to that little tiny sliver which is means the capacity is slightly less than what it was when it was brand new and it is very very small that what loss it has had here's the interesting bits though so whenever you got the juke joint going and the bass is flowing uh, as the bass note hits, boom, you can watch that little meter fall. And then when you have a pause, you can watch it go back up. Uh, it, it's very, it's not instantly reactive, but it's pretty quick. So while you're playing, while you're playing a song, and it, it'll it'll drop now now what happens i noticed that there's a dynamic uh range to it so like in the beginning it'll drop and stay dropped so boom 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 right it'll kind of pull back up a little bit but not not real quick as it gets down below halfway full it'll fill up much quicker after each hit and i think that's because once it gets down below like you know uh 11 or 12 volts the batteries start to fill it up too uh, and start putting even more power into it and this thing will take all the power you can give it so it continues to fill and and if you really hammer on it it'll hold a little bit below half full it'll just kind of fluctuate right there and stay right there it'll it'll drop a little and then come back up drop a little and come back up now the capacitor was showing like 10 volts 10 and a half and 11 volts and stuff like that as it was dropping 
keep coming up. But the voltage on my vehicle was staying up around high 12s the entire time whenever I was really getting it down into the nastiness. Um, so uh, uh, more batteries would be good. But the fact that the capacitor was taking the hit and dropping and coming back up and saving batteries from getting taxed is good. That's what it's supposed to do. Uh, and it does that. And a capacitor does not care about the voltage. Not really. I mean, there is a maximum amount of power you can put in. It's like 17 volts or something like that. Um, but uh, it's a maximum amount of voltage it can receive and be happy, which I'm not nowhere near that. But it's, there's not a minimum. So the capacitor can dip down into whatever and do whatever it's going to do, and it doesn't matter. There's no chemical reaction in there, so it doesn't care about being low. And the fact that it that it's taking those hits and supplementing and keeping the, the and the batteries in the alternator are recharging the capacitor instead of handling the base notes, okay? That's what you want. Because what the alternator can do well is provide a constant steady charge. What it can't do well is re react to base notes. Well, the capacitor can react like crazy. And that's taking care of that reacting. And then the batteries and the alternator are filling that capacitor back up. It's really a beautiful symphony of electricity. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, and I, I washed it, I jammed it, and it works. It's doing the job. Now, just to update you guys, anybody that's curious, uh, I've got 670 amps of alternating power, uh, supposedly. Let's just say I got 500 amps. We'll, we'll cut it down. I got a 370 amp alternator that I know does 370. And another amp that's supposed to do 300, it might be doing a half of that. So we'll just call it 500 amps. Just call it that. Um, and I've got two uh, North Star 80s under the hood and a, another uh, Odyssey Extreme Edition under the hood. So I've got two halves of a battery and one battery under the hood. And then I've got the super cap in the back. I've got an 8,000 watt Depbonce Apocalypse amplifier and four 12 inch subs. And that's not counting the mids and highs, but that's not important in this particular discussion. So that's what I'm running. Uh, if you've got something similar to that um, and you want to put a super cap on it, you're going to get good, good results. I do, however, I do suggest, uh, I think I'm pushing it right to the limit. Okay. I think uh, a little bit more storage would be better for me. So I think I'm right on the edge of being okay. The, the capacitor did reach a point to where it stayed stable and it wasn't dropping anymore. It was just moving back and forth. Uh, but it, but it was, I mean, I was giving it a lot of, a lot of beans too. So I think having a little bit more storage would be good. And I would probably want to locate that as close to that capacitor as I can. Uh, but I don't have any more space back there really. So if I do put anything back there, it's going to be small, like maybe a Titan or something. For now, we are good to go. I'm impressed with the capacitor. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And uh, Big Jeff came through. I mean, you know, uh, 150 bucks. I got 375 farads of capacitor. And it's rocking. And the app works great. I highly suggest that you do use the app. The app is far more fun to mess with than I thought it was going to be. And uh, if you guys enjoy this video, if you found this information helpful, hit that subscribe button. And by all means, leave comments. I love comments. I love to talk to you people. I love to answer your questions. Uh, I love to find out what you're doing and how your system works and what kind of luck you've had with the supercapacitor. So put them down there, guys. 
Hit the subscribe button and leave me some comments. Leave me some comments. The hell is wrong with you people? <laughs>